Tonight, my beloved, I want to talk about the Lord think of me. When we read Psalm 40, 16, but may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who long for you, your saving help always say the Lord is great. But as for me, I am poor and needy. May the Lord think of me. You are my help and my deliverer. You are my God. Do not delay. My beloved, when I sent you the email in English and Arabic about what I'm going to be talking about tonight, I saw that it, Psalm 40 says, the Lord think of me. What an amazing thing. God is giving the psalmist peace that even though there are attacks on him, he is comforted with the thought that God thinks of him and he cares for him. This opens our eyes for to see that the children of God that accepted Jesus as their savior, they can say that God thinks of them. God loves everybody, of course, but the children of God know that God is concerned about them. Now, there is a group of people that believe that God created the universe and he put natural laws in place. And one of those people was Thomas Jefferson, the third US president. And that after God created the universe, uh, he just left. So basically, they don't deny that God created the universe. They say he did, and he put in natural laws, and humans are special because they can reason. Um, but God is done with that, and he left, and he does not interfere in the everyday life of people. I want you to know that the Bible is totally against this idea. God cares for human beings. God loves his creation. He loves people. And even if we reason together, logically, God made people and created everything, created the whole universe, and created the earth for man to inhibit, inhabit. And when he creates something, he must have a goal. He must have a reason for creating people, not just creating them and leaving them. So if I set out to do something, I must have a purpose. And God's thoughts are way above our thoughts. And his wisdom is way above our wisdom. But he did not create the world and abandon it. Because he has a purpose for his creation. And when we know that he has a purpose, then he is concerned about his creation. He cares and he wants to interfere in his creation because he has a purpose, a specific purpose for his creation. So he does care about everyone. And he takes care of the evil people and the good people. He gives everybody oxygen to breathe. He gives everyone 
food, and he takes care of everyone. However, people that choose to believe him, there is a special relationship between them and, and their creator, between them and God. And that relationship is the caring to make sure that his purpose in their life comes to be. So people that give the life to Christ and the beginning of that everlasting life that will happen after they die starts here. So there is a relationship now with God who has created us. And some people will say, do good works because you might discover God. That is not the right way to do things because if you are not rooted in the origin of goodness, God himself, where are you going to find good works to discover God? If we read in Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he has also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many, brothers and sisters and those he predestined he also called those who he called he also justified those he justified he also glorified what then shall we say in response to these things if god is for us who can be against us so god has a purpose It's not just for the person to come to Christ or become a Christian. It's for the person to be transformed into the image of Christ and to be like Jesus. So God does interfere in every little detail in our lives and nothing happens by accident. Nothing is a surprise. God interferes in every little detail in our life. And he tells us, you are important to me and I will interfere in every little detail in your life because I have a purpose in your life and I want that purpose to happen because I have a goal and I want that goal to be achieved. And when we look at Paul, the Apostle Paul in 2 Timothy 4, the Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. So when God rescues us, it's for his heavenly kingdom. It's forever. So the apostle Paul knew that God will rescue him. And it's not because of life here. It is for life here and for the everlasting life to come. So God has a purpose for us and the people he created in his image he wants to give them all the glory and have them spend eternity with them enjoying the glory of God the fullness of his glory that is God's purpose for having us here on earth and this is the purpose of the cross. So everyone has to be encouraged to know that he was not just 
created just to be a professor or a doctor. This is wonderful. Of course, God's will can take place through this. But we are here so that we can share in all God's glory. And He cares for us. And He wants to interfere in every detail of our life, every little thing and every big thing, so that we will be with Him in His heavenly kingdom. And I want you to know how important you are in God's will because of the blood of Christ. So we be, are all parts of that body of Christ. And we are here to achieve His purpose and His plan in our life and His purpose. So some things are going to happen, circumstances will happen, and in Philippians 4, 6, the Bible says, don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So there are things that are out of your control. You go to God and say, what am I going to do with those circumstances? God says, don't worry. Just leave it to me with thanksgiving. I am going to take care of the circumstances. I am in control of the situation. What about things I am supposed to do? In Colossians 3.17, And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. So whatever you do, you do in the name of Jesus, because Jesus will interfere, and He will lift you up and he will help you just do it in faith do it in faith do it in Jesus in Romans 14 we look at this and how sometimes um, there was meat offered for sacrifice and some people were uncomfortable eating that meat because it could have been provided to idols. Now, the apostle Paul said, don't worry about this. By faith, approach everything. If you do everything by faith, then God will take care of it. So if you feel peace eating meat, then eat it. But if you are not at peace with it, then don't. Some people are more comfortable only eating leg legumes. That's fine. If you are peaceful just eating legumes, then go for it. Because God will help you. Just do things through faith in Jesus for His glory and God will direct you. And when we look at Philippians 2.13, for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. So God will put the will in you to act. He will direct you. And even if you sin, confess your sin and change and God will always direct you to the right path if you sin repent and he will guide you in every way in your life he interferes in every little issue every large issue whether it is a situation that came upon you or a situation that you need to act in. So don't look at yourself. Look at the Lord that is in charge of your life. 
And if you take it to heart, the Lord think of me in Psalm 40, you will see how beautiful it is. The Creator that created heaven and earth, that created the human being with all his complexity and all the science can still cannot figure out the human body and all the details. This is the wisdom of God. That amazing God, that limitless God thinks of you and cares for you. And he doesn't just care for you here on earth, but for eternity in his kingdom. I want you to notice something. Why sometimes a person that knows all these facts and all these truths still is not at peace? Because that person needs to know that God is in charge. I remember back when I was young, living in Alexandria, in the evening, there was gathering of fishermen that were, would go fishing, and there were also artists, artists that would draw the sunset. And when I was younger, I would love to go and watch those artists draw. That was something very enjoyable to me. I was about 12 years of age back then. And I remember one time in particular, the artist I was watching started pulling colors that were very different and had really nothing to do with the sunset. I could not see how those colors would be coordinated to paint the sunset, but the artist did. He had an idea how this is going to look after he was done. And some artists coordinate and choose colors that we will never understand. But once they are done with the painting, it is amazing. So God knows that what the little particulars of everyone's life is, and he cares. And sometimes we see situations or circumstances and we don't understand what, where is God or how he's managing. He does, he knows. He is the great creator. We cannot pick colors for him, all green. If we knew every detail, when God says green, we say, oh, that means go. When we, he picks red, we say, oops, that sounds like danger. Black, oh, that's something terrible is going to happen. We will not fathom God and his wisdom in choosing all the strands to weave the future or all the colors to paint the picture. Don't look at the minor details. This is God's to worry about. This is not for you because he chooses everything to work together for good. So say, God, ask God, God, remove my focus from all the minute details. These are yours to look after and help me keep my eyes on you and your goal. Because if you keep your eyes on the minute details that are his, you will find you're going up and down every day and worrying. No, you leave it to God. He is the master. And if you look before dawn breaks, you find darkness everywhere. And when dawn starts to break, you see the little rays of light coming up. That's why 
the Lord appeared once and it was after total darkness and there is no hope whatsoever. Everything looked so dim. Sometimes like circumstances, they look so dark that there is no end to them. We cannot predict when God's light will come through the circumstance because his wisdom is way above our wisdom. His thoughts are way above our thoughts. And in the right time, he will appear and bring the light to the situation. We need to throw everything under God's feet and say, God, I trust you and I depend on you 100%. I will obey you. I will do what you need me to do. I will keep focused on you because you are able to do immensely and immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine. Don't be concerned about all the little details. Because the Lord thinks and cares for me, He wants to interfere in all my life and my service as well. Sometimes when I am serving God, it makes a big difference. If I want to serve God for His glory, so sometimes I can start or I can enter into a discussion with someone, but then find out that that discussion has become an argument. But we find that the Bible in Second Timothy tells us don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments because you know they produce quarrels. When you are serving God, know that God thinks of you and cares for the service you are providing. Your job is to provide the service and don't get into arguments as if you are defending God. God doesn't need anyone to defend him. Your job is to present God's truth and to present what his message is. And if God opens the heart of the listener with the Holy Spirit, he will listen to what you have to say. If you even notice with Jesus himself, he did not defend his words. And read John 6. You will find even in John 6 when Jesus said, whoever eats my flesh, drinks my blood, will have eternal life. And people started leaving. He did not excuse his words. He did not defend himself and started saying, wait a minute, I want to explain myself to you. He said to his disciples, if you need to leave too, that's fine. It's not because Jesus did not care for the listeners or care for his disciples. He knew that his words will affect people that have a softened heart, a ready heart to accept his words. And that's why Peter said, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life because his heart is open. When people's hearts are hardened and closed, they will walk away. No argument, no discussion will persuade them. The Holy Spirit persuades people if their heart is ready. And that's why our service should not be based on discussion and argument. 
It should be based on the God's words and the truth. And know that God thinks of you and cares for you. You need to you not prove that your words are truth. This is the Holy Spirit's work. The Holy Spirit attracts people and persuades the listener. God has a good will and He will anoint your words with the Holy Spirit. Stay away from useless arguments, foolish discussions because the words you are presenting are truth. They are holy truth, godly truth. And when the heart of a person is ready and softened, it will be attracted to those words like a magnet. If you try and appeal to their intellect, it will not work. I am not saying don't explain and don't discuss things. You can discuss things and explain God's word, but don't get into foolish and stupid arguments that produce quarrels. Because God cares. He cares and he thinks of you and he cares about the service you are providing for him. And that's why I want the Holy Spirit to cover your life and your service with peace. I want each one of you, as you are listening to me, to ask God to check your heart and say, God, search my heart. Do I have peace serving you? Am I serving you with peace? Because God wants you to set your eyes on Him and know that He continuously thinks of you and cares for you and He created you for good works and He has a plan for you. So your duty is not to fight but to carry out His will, the godly will, God's plan for your life. Amen. I want you to make a commitment to say, God, I will not get into arguments. I am not going to get into foolish and stupid arguments that produce quarrels. I am going to serve you and your Holy Spirit will cover my service. Another thing I want to talk about, every human being looks for a purpose for their life. It is very sad because many people have emptiness and fear. Every person, because there is a problem, that a person does not know why God made him or her. I hear that all the time. I hear it from every walk of life, rich people and poor people, people that are educated and not educated. Why am I here? Why, did, why am I here? What am I doing on this earth? I get married, I have children, everybody does that. A job, everybody does. Everybody works. But what is my purpose here in this life? But when you, as a child of God, who gave his life to Christ, know that God thinks of you, and he cares for you, and he has a plan for you, it changes your life. Because you don't look at yourself as an ordinary person. You see 
that you have a purpose in this life to carry out God's will and that you are very important to God. So you are very important. And your importance is not because of your work, your job, your social status, your money. It's because the blood of Christ has covered you and he has a very specific plan for you to fulfill his purpose and his will through you. You are created for a purpose that is much higher than what you can ever fathom. Trust God. Trust that He cares for you. Trust that He works in your life. And trust His purpose in your life. And you will find that you are fulfilling that purpose when your eyes are set on Him. Sadly, many people waste their life comparing their lives to others. And as a child of God, you will refuse comparing and, find, and trying to see how you measure up to others because your eyes are set on God's purpose in your life, His specific purpose. And knowing fully that God will be glorified in your life here and in eternity. So the word that the Lord thinks of you has to be a continuous thing that you remember that God thinks of you and cares for you. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. I want to bring another point to your attention. Many times in our life, when we feel weak, and sometimes we can feel frustrated, at these times, it is hard to believe that God has a purpose for your life. You start thinking, what is happening to me? There are many things that don't even make sense. I can't make sense of what's going on. My beloved, I love very much the person of Joseph. He is the son of Jacob. And we read about him in the Old Testament. The saint had a very important relationship with God and never allowed any spirit of frustration to control him. No matter what happened in his life, he was focused on God's will in his life. Can you imagine if Joseph ever wavered, ever doubted God's purpose in his life? He would have sinned and he would have been attracted to any bad circumstance, but he was steadfast. He was a resolved man. He knew God has a specific plan for his life and he wanted to fulfill that plan. That's why when a person is resolved like Joseph. He can refuse sin. He does not want to lie. He does not want to follow sexual misconduct. He, did not, he does not want to be a hypocrite. He does not want to envy 
or let hatred enter his life. He will overcome all these things because he's resolved to follow God and he knows God has a purpose for his life. I used to know a gentleman through hope mission. He was an addict. And he said, before I gave my life to Jesus, I used to do everything bad. I used to be an addict and try everything, even if it's severely harmful or can kill me. And I asked him, even if it would kill you? And he said, yeah, dying was better than the life I had. And then I asked him, what changed your life? He said, when I met with Jesus, I felt and found out that God cares for me as if there was no one else in this life, as if I was the only person created. At that moment, I felt that God cared for me and is concerned for me. And he died for me on the cross. And I found out that I can see myself in a very different light. I started getting delivered from sin, delivered from addiction. And I wanted a different life because I discovered that God has a purpose for my life. And I found that people took care of me and started talking with me about God's purpose in my life. When you discover that God loves you and he thinks of you and he has a specific will and a specific plan in your life, you find power in your life to carry out that purpose in your life. Whenever you feel frustrated or whenever you feel down, remember God's word in the Bible that he has a purpose for you and he cares for you. In Isaiah 40, 27, why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. Don't you know, have you not heard the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary and he his understanding. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. If you ever feel weary or tired, remember you are someone that God's, God cares for specifically. Come with thanksgiving and say, I thank you, God, because you have a purpose in my life. I don't understand everything you're doing. I don't understand every circumstance, but I believe that you have something above the circumstances. You have something above the situation. You have a purpose for me. And I want you to remember that even when Jesus was on the cross, each one of us was in his thought. I was in his thought. In Hebrews 12, 2, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For the joy set before him. Who was that joy? In Isaiah 53, 11, after he had suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied by his knowledge. My righteous servant will justify many and he will bear their inequities. I was in Jesus' thought even when he was suffering on the cross for me. Each one of us was in his thought and Jesus thought of each one of us and that was the joy set in front of him while he was suffering. Let's praise God and thank him today 
that he thought of each one of us while he was on the cross and thank him that he has a purpose for you in this life let's say amen God amen he thought of each one of us on the cross he thought of you him her and he has a good plan for you a good purpose don't worry about the minor details the details are his set your eyes on him and believe that he has a good purpose for you let's lift up our eyes in prayers to him today let's lift our hands up we thank you God because you care for us thank you God because you think of me you think of each one of us thank you Lord in Jesus name our Heavenly Father I thank you that my brothers and sisters and me are a concern of yours and we will not be concerned about all the minor details they are yours we thank you that you think of us you comfort us God and we know that you have a good purpose for our life we don't want to waste our life doing anything else but your will I ask you that you make that truth rooted in us that you think of us fill us with peace and joy the peace that surpasses all understanding I ask for each one listening to us on Facebook and on the internet interfere in each one's life each one's family because you care you care about every minor detail because we are important to you and you will deliver us from every evil on this earth and for eternity we will give you praise and glory God I pray for everyone who is going through hardship and hard circumstances anyone that's going through illness in Jesus name I declare your healing in Jesus name anyone who's going through family problems financial problems we know you will interfere because you promised that if we ask you you will interfere and deliver in Jesus precious name amen